All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, my name is Mike Peralta. I'm the uh, Director of Sales Engineering here at Variato. Today, what we're basically going to go over is the effectiveness of an uh, incident response with Variato 360. Uh, we'll get into how we can leverage 360 um, to manage some of those incidences. Uh, as far as an agenda goes, we're basically going to go, gonna go through a couple slides here, explain uh, who we are as a company, and then we'll get into the demo of the product itself. Sound good? For those of you uh, who don't know who Very Auto is, uh, we've been around since about uh, 1998. We have more than uh, a little bit more than 3,000 enterprise companies around the world. Uh, we're located in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Uh, we also have a, an office uh, up in the Vero Beach location, and we specialize in uh, user and entity behavioral analytics as well as user activity monitoring. Some of the main use cases that we have for Very Auto 360, as you can see here, is the insider threat detection, uh, incident response and investigations, and departing employees. For today, we're just going to basically focus on that incident response and investigations uh, for those employees uh, for, for this webinar. And what does that mean, incident response and investigations for us? Uh, basically, what we're trying to do with this is save you time as a company. Um, instead of having to go through millions and millions of uh, data sets and information that might be in your SIM, we give you the ability to go through and review some of this information much quicker. So a lot of time is saved from that uh, standpoint. We can increase the certainty by utilizing uh, the tools inside of Variato. We can allow you to make sure that the data that you have is accurate and correct, as well as being able to decisively make decisions based on that uh, information. And then obviously you're going to be saving money anywhere from productivity to intellectual property that's not going out the door. We help you save money in, in those as aspects based on those investigations. Kind of an example of uh, how we help and what we do. So in this example here, as far as what's at stake, we take an, ex an example of an 11-year uh, employee at Seagate who was accused of stealing trade secrets from a company. Those trade secrets were then gone, then were shared with Western Digital. Uh, the, the employee was confronted about the theft, um, and the, he actually altered some of those documents that were out there, and he was accused of actually sharing to remove the trade secret information. Utilizing uh, Variata, Seagate was able to prove that the accused fabric the accuser. Uh, actually fabricated that evidence and removed all the trade secrets information. And as you can see here, Western Digital was ordered to pay Seagate $630 million because of that savior of that data. Okay. Uh, this slide here is essentially showing you what we do, gives you some points of uh, what we're actually tracking and what we're giving you the ability to investigate on. So you can see here, we have things like user status, file transfers, applications used, network usage, online searches, uh, being able to track websites visited, emails sent and received, chat and IM, document tracking, keystrokes typed, and screen recording. And I'll get to these inside uh, of the demo and the actual application itself as well. The solution that we're focusing on today is also called uh, Very Auto 360. Uh, the main portion of it is going to be the incident response and investigations. And what I'll do now is I'll pause this real quick and I'll jump over to the actual application itself. All right, give it a second to refresh. All right, what you're looking at here is the actual uh, Variato 360 application itself. Well, what I've pulled up first the actual, is the actual recorder settings. And what this is in front of you is the actual agent and settings that are applied to those agents that allow you to go through and say, okay, what do I actually want to collect on the client machine? What's important to me? What do I want to know about for these investigations? Uh, this kind of follows a lot of that garbage in, garbage out type uh, philosophy. Anything that we collect here allows us to report on it later on and collect for our incidences or any sort of investigation that we might be doing. So you can see here we have things like screenshots, um, chat, IM activity, website visited, uh, email activity, files transferred, keystrokes typed. We do have the ability to obviously not capture passwords if that's needed. 
program activity, user status, and document tracking, and we can also get into network activity itself. We can create multiple profiles. So this recorder profile that I've got here, just a basic Windows profile. You can do Mac profiles, or you can have mul multiple sets of profiles as well. Basically, what that allows you to do is um, add or remove different types of profiles based on the types of things that you're collecting. You'll also notice in the alerts and po uh, policies here, we have things like uh, alert operators, alert keywords, alert events, alert an anomalies. Some of the things that we can alert on are some of the operators that are happening in the environment. Uh, some of those keywords, keywords are going to be from a list that we can create so we can group those keywords into a list. Uh, for example, the, the fraud alert, this allows us to go through and monitor application for certain types of keywords for fraud. So you can see here we want to monitor applications, chat, email, basically going down the entire gauntlet. We can specify what users we want to monitor, whether it be a specific set of users, all users in a group. And then we can go into the keywords we, we want to monitor from here. And these keywords uh, are not selectively set inside of this audit and alert policy. It's actually set as a category. And that way we can add and remove uh, those keywords from that category as a whole instead of having to do it as a one-off process. And then once we've done that, we set up the, the actual alert itself. How often do we want to receive an email about uh, certain keywords that are happening in the environment? Okay. Same thing holds true for events. So any events that are out there that we want to monitor for, so something like uh, users going to social networking sites, we can specify what type of activity you want to learn on, the users we want to apply this to, those conditions. Those conditions in this case are going to be what social networking sites we want to be monitoring and alert for. So you can see Facebook, LinkedIn, Reddit, those types of things. And then the action that we want to actually apply. On top of that, we can also do anomalies. And what anomalies helps us with is this allows us to get into uh, an aspect of um, trying to get ahead of the curve, so to speak. We go into, the, this kind of gets into the user behavioral analytics piece. This allows us to go through and take a look at anything that's um, suspicious for an end user from a, a user standpoint. So if a user is doing something that's um, common, a day-to-day -day process, um, they answer so many emails, they go to these websites, they do certain things, we're going to go ahead and compare that user to themselves over a set of time. Typically, after about 20 days, we can get a, a, a good feel for what that end user is doing. Anytime that user does something that's out of the norm from that standpoint, we're going to go ahead and alert you on that. So from here, we can essentially create this alert based on a bunch of settings from the users to the actual activity we're looking for. So you can see here we have the count, number of files touched, file size, printing, uh, outbound transfer, so things that are coming and going for that end user as well. Uh, if we wanted to add other things like um, sent emails, we could change it to sent emails so we can take a look at what's being sent. And then resource usage as well. Okay. Over time, you're probably going to want to change some of the sensitivity. So this will, you'll have to play around with in your environment. This allows you to go through and say, OK, we're getting too many alerts or too many false positives. Let's narrow this down or let's increase this based on that information. And that allows you to, to kind of narrow down and square into what you're trying to do and, and trying to get those alerts so that they're um, not so many or not too little and kind of like right in that sweet spot. And then once again, you set up the action of receiving an email uh, when this alert actually happens. <clears throat> if we want to do this user to a group from an anomaly standpoint, we can go ahead and compare a user to a group. And what that basically means is we're setting up the same user, but we're going to um, go ahead and compare them to maybe like a sales group or the group that they belong to. And what this allows us to do is say, okay, this user is part of this group, but for some reason we want to receive an alert uh, when this user does something different. So for some reason this user is doing something different than the rest of the group, a number of things could be happening. A, they're in the job, wrong job responsibility, have the wrong job responsibilities associated to them. They're in the wrong group, so maybe you need to move them into a different group. Um, or they're doing something that's suspicious in the environment. So once again, we get into things like counts, attachments, uh, overall size, and language. The last one there I wanted to bring your attention to is the actual sentiment. What's interesting about this is this allows us to go through and, and determine based on kind of the mood of the end user. And what I mean by that is the user goes through on a daily basis, and maybe he's a very you know big team player. They sit there, and they, they have a lot of things like um, go team, rah, 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 very excited in their emails, a lot of uh, outgoing personality can be felt through the way that they're actually doing things in the environment. 
all of a sudden that changes, whether it be something from home, uh, work experience, whatever the case may be. But the, that user goes from u- utilizing things like team and us to me, I um, is a little bit more focused, a, a lot more um, sounds a lot more angry in the in their emails. Uh, maybe they're going to other websites like, you know, job search like Indeed or Monster.com. We're going to pick that up in the sentiment and be able to alert you on that type of differential as well. Once again, then we go ahead and check the sensitivity and narrow this down. We can create the action and then we have the summary for the information. Now that we've set this up, we've got your alerts in place. We're recording information. Uh, we've got keyword alerts. We've got all the information that we need set up and we're, we've sent these agents or these recorders out into the environment. We want to be alerted on this information. We'll be, once we've been alerted on it, we want to, want to then go ahead and say, okay, how, what do I do with this stuff? How do I find information? How do I get my hands on it? We have a couple of ways to do that. We have your uh, the reporting console here. This allows you to see general things like alerts, keywords, call activity, whatever the case may be. And each one of these you can click into and dig into that information and find what's happening. You can see the screenshot of the information. You can see URL text information, just general kind of a high level overview of what keywords were being utilized and you're being alerted for in the environment. Now, if you're looking for something specific, if you want to, um, if you know something's happening or you need to look for something like the word confidential that's in the environment, that could be pretty broad sped, but you can look for the word confidential, you can use the word Gumby, it could be something specific for you that's in the environment. But in this case, let's look for the word confidential. And what happens is we actually parse all that data that we've collected and pull up everything where that word confidential is actually included. We give you a list of the things that's um, being leveraged with that word confidential. You can see you have email, keyword alerts, um, pretty good list here, file transfers, document tracking, once you've found that information, you can also see, in this case, it's an email. You can see where that word confidential was used. If you want to go one step further, we can actually go to the snapshot of this data. And this is where we start getting into the investigation uh, of that incident. We can now take a look. Okay, that word confidential was, was utilized. What does that mean to me? I want to go ahead and see what that user was doing to leverage that word. And you can see here the word confidential down at the bottom here. And what we're watching here is kind of like a DVR process. Uh, that Tara is doing here. And this is essentially allowing you to see what confidential information is that user leveraging or are they sending or typing. And we've now captured that data. And if this data is actually something that we're interested in, we can actually save it and and export it out and save it for later so that we can um, utilize it for our general counsel or investigations or whatever HR needs to do with this information after uh, we have collected it and, and, and found it. As far as the user behavioral analytics behind this, um, the one piece of uh, data that we do give you the ability to report on from that standpoint is the actual anomaly reports. So we can actually go in here and see what type of anomaly uh, activities have happened. You can, this is essentially what the email would look like if it was sent to you. It gives you an idea of what's happened from a, an end user standpoint as well as what has been kicked off. So you can see any one of these email alerts can show up uh, once something has changed in the environment from a user to group, user to user, or a compromised con- con- um, credential standpoint. All right. We also have behavioral groups that we can leverage in here as well. And what this basically does from an anomaly standpoint is allows you to see <clears throat> and group together users of groups that are similar. So I mentioned earlier how we could do users versus groups. So y- this is where the groupings start to occur. You have a gr- bunch of users that are in the environment. Those users are going to be grouped together based on like types of things. So the sales organization probably does a lot of similar things. They, they email about the same. They do a lot of calls, the IM, all the, the verbiage, the way they talk, all that stuff is very similar. So they can be grouped into a sales organization. Same thing with administration, marketing, and engineering. And once we have that, that's when we can then leverage the anomalies uh, for alert tracking and things like that need in that nature that need to actually happen. Okay. We do have the ability to create um, groups. So if we have to assign this to another department in the environment, so they need to be the ones that go through the reporting, not only can we take the data itself and put it into a package and send it to someone if we needed to, we also can have what we call a, a type of role-based administration. So you can actually assign the consoles to certain users and those users could actually come inside here and, and do what they need to do 
um, without disrupting the actual console itself. So if they need to re read reports or take a look at certain things from certain users, they can do that inside of here as well. Okay. Now, one thing I didn't touch upon is when we actually do create these policies, a lot of the times what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and record data and depending on the level uh, of investigation we need to do, we might wanna move those users from one policy to another or one profile to another. So essentially what you, what I would recommend doing is in the beginning, you start users out uh, with a general profile and wait till certain alerts come up. When a, a suspicious activity happens for a user, what you're gonna probably wanna do is then drop them into a different policy for recording that's a little bit more intense. So instead of having that user being recorded for everything, you just have them being recorded for certain things, and then one, once you've determined, okay, maybe we want to take a look at this user, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, you can then drop them into another profile, and that profile can then start capturing more data and more relevant information to help with your investigation as well. Okay. That's all I have for right now. Um, if anybody has any questions,